Here's what it says on the State Street Global Advisors website. Fearless Girl ignited a global conversation about the power of women in leadership and inspired companies around the world to add women to their boards. Now we're bringing the Fearless Girl campaign to London to continue expanding the reach of her message. Learn more about how Fearless Girl is reinventing investing. Unquote. Now, normally I like to make it a good bit further into one of my talks before calling bullshit, but in this case, I was reading the first thing you come to on the State Street website. So, their little statue ignited a global conversation, did it? Well, I really don't think so. Feminists have been pushing for female representation on corporate boards since before Fearless Girl was a smudge in the bottom of the smelting pot. They've been crying about women's absence where the rubber meets the road in corporate management and have sought by hook or crook to get women placed there regardless of their lack of qualifications, experience, education, or even aptitude. So-called Fearless Girl, the five-foot, two-inch tall sculpture created by a woman named Christiane Visbal, is just another manifestation of that agenda. It's not about improving corporate performance. It's about putting women at the helm, whether they can improve anything or not. After all, who needs a proven track record of brilliance when you have a vagina? And true to feminist idiocy, Fearless Girl started out her alleged but dubious trailblazing with resounding incompetence. You see, her first appearance was at Bowling Green in the financial district of Manhattan, where she was placed standing defiantly in front of the iconic charging bull created by sculpting maestro Arturo de Modica. De Modica immediately objected to city officials, noting sensibly that his sculpture of the charging bull was a symbol of progress and economic prosperity and that placing so-called fearless girl in that position completely altered the context of the meaning of his original work. Or as Demotica said through his attorney, and I quote, the statue corrupted Charging Bull's artistic integrity by distorting the intent of his statue from a symbol of prosperity and for strength into a villain. I don't think anyone at the time asked why feminists wanted the symbol of a female to metaphorically stand up to and defy economic prosperity. Just as no one asked why State Street Global Advisors, a Wall Street investment firm, wanted to promote themselves with anti-capitalist messaging. Then again, these are feminists we're talking about. Experience informs us that asking questions about the stupid things they do only gets us even stupider answers. Besides, the blue pill world is as the blue pill world does. Rather than asking any cogent questions about the stupendously inept placement of so-called fearless girl, we had giddy feminists whooping it up and sycophantic politicians like Mayor Bill de Blasio twisting the facts beyond comprehension by tweeting shit like, and I'm quoting him here, men who don't like women taking up space are exactly why we need fearless girl. His statement, getting a resounding 40,000-plus likes, was on par with his other attacks on Demotica, who he criticized repeatedly as a sexist and misogynist simply for wanting to maintain the non-political intent of one of his major works. Like I said, who needs brains when the pussy is in play? This was proven a number of times over as a slew of other politicians joined in the You Go Girl chorus around the 50-inch pile of bronze. For once, though, even the major league-level pussy passes that were issued to an inanimate object weren't enough. Demotica's argument prevailed, perhaps because he was unarguably right, and so-called fearless girl was forced to put on her big girl panties and move. Being billed as though it were the plan all along, replicas of so-called fearless girl made stops in Melbourne and London, while the original made its way to facing the New York Stock Exchange, 
where she will presumably stare down and stand up to male-dominated capitalism. Oh well, if you can't get qualified women to represent proportionally inside Wall Street, I suppose a facsimile of a little girl on the outside will do, pathetic as that is. For me, though, the subject of so-called fearless girl has another message that runs deeper and oh so much truer than the intended and accidental implications of the artist. When you look at the big picture and get a view of fearless girl from 10,000 feet, you see one of the few things that feminists are actually capable of creating. A threat narrative. After all, what, if not some sort of threat, does so-called fearless girl stand in defiance of? And of course, that threat, as always, is men and masculinity. It's those really mean guys who get educated in really hard subjects, who work their lives away like beasts of burden, who don't whine about how they're treated or about where the air conditioning is set, or even whether bosses are fair or even-handed. When the heat gets to be too much for the men, they get out of the kitchen, quietly, and go do something else. Women tend not to do any of these things. They just tend to make different, much easier, less sacrificial choices. Unfortunately, they are also prone to gather en masse and worship statues to their victimhood. Or march wearing pink pussy hats, complaining endlessly that the world doesn't make really hard things so easy that even they can do it. And to those ends, they get a ton of support. As I mentioned earlier, Bill de Blasio and a slew of other spineless politicians pole vaulted onto the outrage bandwagon, bellicose as rabid squirrels that anyone would not bow down to a statue that supports their political hogwash. In other words, the supposedly defiant and fearless girl isn't standing up to anything alone. There isn't any courage represented here because fearless girl, like all other feminist displays of bravery, depends on the circumferency of male backers to stand against any resistance. This isn't fearless girl. This is feminism's pet chihuahua standing between its owner's legs barking at whatever passes like it's a pit bull in its own deluded mind. The same dog without support would be scratching at the door to get in with its tail between its legs. But of course, that won't stop feminists from lauding fearless girl. Like all their false gods, excuse me, goddesses, they are paper tigers, impotent without the protective instinct of men, however misguided those men may be. Their only use seems to be claiming they can do anything men can do, if only. If only men weren't in the way. If only hard sciences weren't so patriarchal, which is feminist code speak for really hard. If only the world would just look the other way every time feminists make outrageous claims of their capabilities then promptly prove how full of shit they really are. Maybe they'd spend more time working at brokerages than going for humanities degrees and whining about being excluded from the big money. And that is it for this talk. I want to thank my Patreon and subscribe star supporters who stuck with me steadfastly while I took a much-needed hiatus from the writing and editing grind. My batteries are now charged again, and I look forward to doing more of what I like best in the days ahead. As always, I hope you've enjoyed, even if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.